Hello, friends. Welcome to Prophetic Worldview. I'm Pastor Benjamin Faircloth, and I have a very, very special guest uh, with me today. I'm really excited about uh, bringing on uh, Brother Michael Snyder. Uh, I'm going to real quick just let him uh, say hi, and then I want to uh, kind of set this thing up. Michael, welcome to Prophetic Worldview. Well, uh, it's great to be with you, Pastor Faircloth. Thank you so much for having me on today. I think we're going to have a really great discussion that people are really going to enjoy today. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, it's been an amazing uh, seven years since really the last time we got together. I think it's been that long. And uh, I was contemplating the other day, the Lord spoke to my heart and said, you know, you, you need to get a hold of Brother Michael and talk to him about this eclipse that's coming up. Because we got together seven years ago uh, here at United Church at a prophetic conference, uh, April the 19th and the 20th of 2017. And uh, that was the first solar eclipse that was coming across. And uh, you had laid it out very prophetically and very powerfully. And one of the things that you said in that particular message there was after this 2024 eclipse, if America doesn't repent, there will be no America. I don't know if you remember saying that, but it was a it stuck with me the entire time. And I think that's where we are. We're at this convergence point, I believe, the point of no return for America. I believe America has been marked for destruction. And a lot of people are looking at this more, I think, Brother Michael, as an entertainment thing, something to go look at, uh, just not seeing the prophetic significance of it. And so uh, that's why I had you on to talk about it. Seven years fast forward, here we are. It's right at the door, April 8th, I believe, is the, is the exact day. Uh, Michael, share with us uh, what you're feeling, what you're seeing, and the research you've done. And uh, we'll just let you go, man, and have a great time talking about this. Well, uh, Pastor Faircloth, uh, I, I, I truly believe that this upcoming eclipse and, and the, the combination of these two eclipses is so important, and there's so much to to talk about, and so I'll I'll try to go slow and try to hit one thing at a time, hmm. because there's so much that we have learned, so much since seven years ago we first talked about this. Of course, we knew that this other eclipse was coming, and they formed this giant X over America, and and all of that we knew that all the way back then. But now we've learned so much more since that time, and I believe that this is very very important. So let me. First of all, why are we talking about eclipses? Well, let me and, and let me pull this up here uh, on my screen so I, I quote it correctly. But Genesis 1.14, and let me go to the King James Version, uh, uh, and, and let me read what it says. Genesis 1.14, and God said, let there be lights in the firmament, firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and for years. And so, uh, Pastor Faircloth, we have from the first chapter of the Bible, the very beginning, God said, hey, I'm creating these great lights in the sky, and they're going to be for signs and seasons and years, And but for signs. They're going to be for signs. And, yes. and we have the sun and the, the moon God created at that time. And so now these eclipses, they involve in the sun and the moon. Now you go to Luke ch chapter 21. And then Jesus was talking about the time just before his return, and he specifically warned us. He said, hey, in the days prior to my return, there's going to be signs in the sun and moon and stars. Now for an eclipse, you got to have the sun and the moon. And so, right. and, and we don't know exactly what Jesus meant when he was saying that, but what we do know is that we should be watching the heavens and saying, hey, uh, and anticipating that there will be signs. And so we're, we're, we're looking and saying, does this eclipse mean anything? And we don't, we don't have all the answers. I don't have all the answers sitting here today. But we're trying to be watchmen. We're trying to take a look. And we're trying to figure things out the best we can because we're all seeing through a glass darkly. And I always tell people, the closer we get to the events of the end times, the more clear they're going to be for all of us. So things are a lot clearer to me than they were seven years ago. Uh, you know, I'm a different person than I was seven years ago. I'm sure the same is for true for all of you. And so we're all trying to get closer to God. We're all trying to figure these things out. We're all trying to uh, uh, figure figure this out the best that we can. Um, 
But as I've meditated on these eclipses and studied these things, and I've come to the conclusion that they are important enough that I put them on the cover of my most recent book entitled Chaos. You know, so they're right on the, the paths of these eclipses are right on the cover of my book because I believe that God is trying to tell us something. Yes. And so let's go back seven years and let's go back to the uh, uh, eclipse uh, of 2017. Um, uh, because that, you know, that was uh, very important. It crossed from the, the it was the called the great American eclipse of 2017 crossed from hit the path of the eclipse hit the started uh, at the West coast of the United States, went all the way across to uh, the East coast. And it was also known as the seven Salem eclipse because mm -hmm. it actually crossed over seven cities in the United States, uh, seven locations uh, called Salem, which Salem being short for Jerusalem. So uh, if some called it the seven Salem eclipse, and I, I found that to be very interesting. Yes. Interestingly, now though, that now we've got the great American eclipse of 2024 kind of coming from the opposite direction. It's gonna come and it's gonna enter the United States, the path of this eclipse, it's going to enter the United States uh, in Texas. And interestingly, out of more than 19,000 cities, villages, towns, communities in the United States, the very first one that the path of this eclipse is going to hit is Eagle Pass, Texas. Hmm. Now, Pastor Faircloth, that should ring a bell because, of course, Eagle Pass, Texas is kind of the epicenter of this controversy over immigration between yeah. the state governments and the federal government. And so much there's a, a, a microscope. So many news stories are being written about Eagle Pass, Texas. Mm -hmm. But that's the first community that's being hit, which I think is very, very interesting. Yes. Then as it goes over Texas, it's also going to hit the community of Jonah, Texas, which is very, <laughs> very interesting. But then beyond that, as it travels along, it's actually going to cross over seven locations in the United States and an eighth in Canada, but seven locations inside the United States called Nineveh, <laughs> which is, you know, very, very kind of ominous, right? Because, Definitely. you know, we read about Nineveh in the Bible and yeah. Jonah went and preached in Nineveh and they repented. But then later on, Nineveh fell back into sin and ultimately they were destroyed and they were judged. Um, but it's interesting that this eclipse goes over Jonah, Texas, and then, you know, seven locations called Nineveh. But interestingly, you go back to the days of Jonah, and of course, he went and, and preached to Nineveh, and they repented at that time. But uh, scientists have discovered that there was actually a, a solar eclipse at that time, about that time, and we don't know for sure if it uh, was uh, right before Jonah went to Nineveh or at the same time or what, what the exact timing was, but it was right about that time. So, so scholars have speculated, could it be possible that eclipse was part of the, was part of the confirmation of the preaching mm. of Jonah? Jonah preached to them and, and, but, and there, there was also this fearful sight in the heavens that said, and then the people said, Hey, we've got to repent. You know, there, there's a sign in the heavens and and this make, this prophet is preaching to us. And, you know, we don't know for sure, but I think that's very very interesting that 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 kind of uh, you know may have happened. And now uh, it's happening in in our time, right, in our right. time, in our day. And so you know we've got these two eclipses now. If you put them on a map, and I believe when I I spoke at at Ignited Church all those years ago, I put a map up on the screen. But if people want to see the map today, I've, I've included it in my recent articles about the eclipses. Or if you could just go to Google and type in uh, X over America that, you know, with the, the 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 eclipses, you know, you should be able to find this map. But I have this map in my articles on my websites. Um, but these two eclipses, if you put the Great American Eclipse of 2017 on a map, with, along mm -hmm. with the path of the Great American Eclipse of 2024, they form a giant X over America. Right. And people say, well, how rare would something like this be? Hmm. Um, well, it, you know, it's pretty rare, Pastor Faircloth, because if you stood on one place on Earth and just stood still and didn't move, you would ex experience, you would get to experience a total solar eclipse every 360 years. 
if wow. you said just in one place on earth. So it's rare if you're just standing in one place to get to experience a solar eclipse. But then the, an intersection where you have two solar eclipses come together in one location, that's very rare. Um, okay, where they where they cross, where there's an intersection. So we see this intersection, which is going to happen right over the heartland of America. Uh, and and this, in, this giant X over America uh, will be finished on April 8th. Now, Pastor Faircloth, hmm. let me uh, ask you a question uh, for a moment so you can kind of jump in because I've got lots more to share about this. But let me okay. ask you a question really quick. Sure. If you mark a giant X over something, what does that signify or what could that mean? Or, you know, just in your daily life, if you if you've got something and you're putting a giant X over something, uh, what would that typically mean? Yeah. X marks the spot. Yeah. Yeah. X marks <laughs> the spot or something is finished. Something yep. is completed. It's over. Crossing something off a list, yep. you know, uh, or you're putting an X over something because it's bad. You know, usually, you know. It doesn't have a, a real positive connotation. Sure. Usually it kind of has a negative connotation. Although, like you said, X marks the spot. That could be, mean that, okay, here something's going to happen, or this is a, where you need to be looking. Yeah. Uh, and so mm -hmm. it's very, very interesting that this X, and let's talk about exactly, well, before I get to that, let me uh, kind of talk a little bit more about the, 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 the some of the incredible coincidences regarding these eclipses because you have the path of the great american eclipse of 2017 touched 14 different u.s states and that was an all-time record for a total solar eclipse in terms of the number of states it touches and now but now the next one in, here in 2024 it will touch 15 different states hmm. and so it'll set a new all-time record and we're not going to have another uh, total solar eclipse in the United States till 2044. That's right. So yeah. for some people out there, this is gonna be, would be the last chance, you know, even if Jesus doesn't return, whatever. Uh, but I believe Jesus is coming back. But mm -hmm. yeah, the point is another total solar eclipse is not going to happen until 2044. So, I mean, this is, this is, this is a, a rare event. It's, we're being told it's going to be the the most watched astronomical event in all of U.S. history wow. in terms of the number of people viewing it with their own mm -hmm. eyes, the number of people tuning in to view it. It's going to be a really big deal. There, there's going to be headlines all over the nation, a really, really big deal, just like it, uh, the Great American Eclipse of 2017 was. But this Great American Eclipse of 2024 will actually cross over all three nations in North America, Mexico, the United States, and Canada. Now, the last time a total solar eclipse went over all three land masses, you have to go all the way back to 664 AD to find wow. the last time a total solar eclipse went over all three land masses. And then it won't happen again when a total solar eclipse crosses over all three land masses until 2316 that year. So this, you know, this mm. is pretty remarkable uh, yeah. of, of how this is happening now. Something else remarkable about, well, about all this is happening on April 8th, okay? And Pastor Faircloth, when the sun goes down on April 8th in Jerusalem, when the sun goes down on April 8th, uh, the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar will commence, will begin. And of course, in Israel is ahead of us in terms of time zones. Mm -hmm. So when this eclipse is happening in the United States and, and crossing over, the sun will have just set in Israel. The first day of the first month will have begun on God's calendar, the, uh, commencing a new cycle. And that is when this eclipse is going to be crossing over America and, 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 and completing this giant X over America. Now, mm -hmm. the exact location... Pastor Faircloth, where this uh, epicenter, where the intersection of the two eclipses happens, uh -huh. is in southern Illinois, and is right uh, uh, there on top of the New Madrid fault zone. Mercy. Mercy. Yeah. Yeah, talk about that. 
<laughs> and I, 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 I talked a bit about that back yeah. when I, uh, I believe when I, I spoke at United Church seven years ago. Yeah. Well, what I didn't realize at the time, what we've learned since then, is that a similar things happened before. There was a an eclipse in 1806, another eclipse in 1811, formed a giant X over America, at, not in the exact location we're talking about today, but still in the New Madrid area, right. um, uh, kind of the Indiana area. Uh, but there were the two eclipses, 1806, 1811. And then three months after the second eclipse in 1811, a series of earthquakes began. A series of four gigantic earthquakes started along the New Madrid Fault, which were the largest and strongest earthquakes in the entire history of the continental United States. That's right. And you know, they were so strong, the Mississippi River ran backwards, rang church bells in Washington, D.C., and, and just caused catastrophic destruction, although that area of the country was not highly populated like it is today. But it was just horrible, horrible earthquakes um, along the New Madrid Fault three months after that X was formed in that area of the country. So we kind of have a precedent uh, now. Now, I want to make it very clear to people out there, I'm not expecting any specific events or to happen on April 8th or any other particular day. So if we get to April 8th, you know, there's speculation on the internet about this could happen, that could happen. I'm not expecting right. any particular event to happen on that particular day. And and But what we do have is a precedent before where we had a, an X over America, New Madrid fault zone, and then subsequently at some later time, three months later, then the series of earthquakes began so that's very, very interesting. It may be a prophetic foreshadowing for our time, potentially, because as I've covered in my books, as I covered in Lost Prophecies of the Future of America, as I believe I, I talked about when I came down to United Church seven years ago, mm -hmm. that God has been showing his people for, for decades, for a, a long, 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 long time, that someday there will be a cataclysmic earthquake along the New Madrid Fault Zone in yes. the center of our country, which will physically divide North America in two. And particularly, in particular, there will be, it will be so catastrophic, it will create a new body of water stretching from the Great Lakes all the way down, uh, uh, all the way from the Great Lakes to the Gulf of Mexico, literally dividing the United States of America in half physically. And now the, I believe there will be more than one earthquake. So it may not be the first New Madrid earthquake that fully creates this new body of water, but ultimately right. there will be this new body of water created. Our land will be physically divided. And what people have been shown time after time after time after time in the, the in supernatural experiences mm -hmm. with God, where they've been shown this with their own eyes, they've been they've been told that the Lord has told them. Because you have divided my land, I will divide your land. And they're yeah. shown that when the United States is involved in physically dividing the land of Israel, then this great catastrophe, the physical dividing of the United States, will happen to us. Yes. And so it's, it's very ominous that right now, Pastor Faircloth, we talked, we've been talking about this for so many years, but the Biden administration, along with the Saudis, Yep. They're pushing so hard. They're saying, Israel, we've got to have a Palestinian state. Now is the time that, you you know, we, I, 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 in the conclusion of this war, that's got to be the final result. Yes. We've got to have a Palestinian state. You wanted to say something there? Oh, no, I'm agreeing. I'm, I'm, I'm going to shout and run around the, uh, the, the church grounds here because that's exactly what I was going to tell you. They've been talking about it just recently. Just recently. Yeah, this is very much in the news right now. That they that, that it, it, it's been constantly in the news in 2024, and I believe yeah. ultimately this war in the Middle East. It's I believe it's going to get really bad. There's yeah. going to be it's going to be horrible, and I believe this is one of the three wars of the apocalypse. The this a giant war in the Middle East, war with Russia, war with China, and two of them have already begun. And I don't right. know why more people aren't waking up. More people in the church. Why that? Why are they waking up? Because these wars of the apocalypse, we've been warning about that God's people have been warning about prophetically for so long. Two of them have actually already started, but still most are asleep. But that's yeah. another subject uh, we can <laughs> talk about more if you want. Um, but we should get get back to this eclipse. But yeah, I believe this war in the Middle East, the outcome of it will be the dividing of the land of Israel. I believe that will be the sequence. Yes. And 
at once that happens, there will be now no, be nothing holding back the giant cataclysm in the middle of the country. Now, we don't know how quickly it will happen. I mean, we have seen other times when the U.S. has done things to divide the land of Israel, and there have been judgments very quickly after that. But in terms yeah. of what happens along the New Madrid, we don't know if it'll be days or weeks or months or, or years. I Probably not. We don't have too many years left, but we don't know the exact timing, but we know one comes before the other. Mm -hmm. Just like we we knew we were waiting for you know, John Paul Jackson had seen that a, a storm like a hurricane or a, with the strength of a hurricane, a, a devastating storm would happen in California before the big one would come to California. And so all these years we've been waiting for that storm, to, the, 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 that terrible storm to come to California. And we've seen, you know, California get hit massively, you yes. know, uh, recently, not too long ago. And so I believe the 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 thing that must happen before the big one has been fulfilled. Now, we don't know how soon the big one will come, but uh, all these years we said, well, that big storm hasn't hit California yet. So the, 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 the big earthquake can't happen yet. So God will often set things that have to happen one before another. So in this case, before the New Madrid, we've got to have that dividing, formal dividing of the land of Israel. So that, that's what we're watching for and trying to understand these things the, the very best that we can. But interestingly, Pastor Faircloth, you, you look at that intersection in Southern Illinois, uh, right on the New Madrid fault uh, where, where we're talking about. Um, now, where the 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 uh the the two eclipses where mm -hmm. they intersect is in southern illinois and in particularly it's in the town of maconda just south of uh, carbondale and uh, uh interestingly the path the, the the place where the uh totality of the eclipse will last the longest for 2017 and 2024 just happens to take place at the place where they intersect, mm. which is very, very interesting because the totality of the eclipse is not equal in time all along the path of the eclipse. But the place in 2017 where the totality of the eclipse lasted the longest and where it will last the longest in 2024 just happens to be at this exact place where they intersect in wow. southern Illinois, which is pretty, pretty amazing. Pretty amazing. But this part, particular area of Southern Illinois is known as Little Egypt. For you know, 200 years, it's been known as Little Egypt. And the sport local sports teams are you know named after that theme and everything. And 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 cities and communities in that area are named after after it. And and no one knows exactly why it's called uh Little Egypt. Um, but hmm. uh you know, uh, uh, today there you've got the town of Cairo there. You know, uh, it, it's it's on a peninsula where the Ohio River meets the Mississippi, and and it's uh, right. you know so many things about it. It's been known as Little Egypt for for a very very long time uh, in that particular area. And so they got me thinking that you know the people of Egypt, I'm, I'm sorry, the people of Israel were in Egypt. Right. for 400 years, and then God brought them out with an exodus. Now you look at the United States, the Mayflower came just oh, just slightly over 400 years ago. So mm. we've also had our 400-year cycle, if you will, and now is, is God saying something about an exodus, or now that our time is ending, or that judgment is coming, just like judgment came in Egypt after 400 years yeah, uh, you know that's a, that's a very interesting question. I don't have the answers, but I just thought that that's very interesting. Yeah. Now another thing in this particular area, this very small area of the country, there is a cross. It's mm -hmm. 111 feet high, Pastor Faircloth. 111 wow. feet high, and it's known as the Bald Knob Cross of Peace. In fact, it used to be the tallest cross in the entire Western Hemisphere. Hmm. But now you have this cross, which is crossing right above this giant white cross, which is one of the one of the tallest in the world, it used to be the tallest in the entire Western Hemisphere. There's this giant white cross, <laughs> which is right at this intersection 
of the two eclipses. And see, I didn't know this seven years ago. So much of yeah. we've learned so much more yeah. Yeah. than I shared with your church seven years ago, Pastor Fairclaw. Yeah, go on, man. I'm I'm enjoying every moment of it. That's why the Holy Ghost had you come on. He's like, you know, hey, there's there's so much, there's a plethora of information. And and and, and let me just interject. I, I I believe these are all warnings. I believe these are all signs, wonder warnings, omens, whatever you want to call them, as as it said. Uh, in Genesis 114, uh, you know, in I, I personally believe I don't want I want to get your take on it. And I don't want to cut you off your stream there, but uh, I, I again I think this is the final warning. I think this this is it. This is for America to see it. Uh, there, there's too many, I'm, you know, coincidences. I just believe it's it's signs and wonders uh, to get us looking up and looking uh, inwardly, really, where we are as a nation. And uh, what, what do you think? And, and I want you to go back to this great, great research you're doing. But I had to interject that. Do you do you think this is our final warning? Do you feel like this is what it is? Well, I th I think it is another warning. I think it, yeah. it is a sign. I think it's a warning, and it's coming at at. I believe I felt so I felt so strongly about 2024 as yeah. because we're seeing a confluence of events where we've got the most chaotic. I believe the mo it'll be the most chaotic election in our entire history. And yeah. I, the, I believe the result of the election will set the stage for even more chaos. So we've got uh, the political chaos in this country, which will reach a crescendo in 2024 and beyond. Then we at the time when these wars, which we've been in preaching about, when I would preached about war with China, war with Russia, uh, you know, a decade ago, or even before yeah. that, people thought mm. I was nuts. But mm. now... Uh, these wars are all coming together now here in 2024 and you know uh, natural disasters pestilences uh, you know all these things are we're a confluence of events economic troubles that you know where the cnn says we're in the worst global food crisis in, uh, in modern history right now and it continues to get worse more people falling into hunger and so all these things we've been expecting are starting to come together and uh, so i believe we're on the verge of incredible chaos and I believe that the fact that it is happening on the first day of the first month on the biblical calendar in the spring, uh, I think it's marking the year, the biblical year, which begins in the spring. I think it's marking this th the threshold of time that we're moving into. So I agree with you very much what you, the remarks you made there. I believe it is a warning. Like I said, I don't expect any specific event to happen right. on April 8th itself. And we may go through that day and nothing may happen other than the eclipse. It may, because oftentimes if God's sending a warning, it's because the warning comes before what's going to happen next. So right. if this is a warning, that doesn't mean God sends a warning and then something happens that day, but the right. warning comes and then the consequences, if the warning is not heeded, follow. So yeah, yeah I do believe that it is a uh, a warning, a major warning. So if people want to look up the the cross that I just mentioned, it's called the Bald Knob Cross of Peace in Southern Illinois. Um, and it's uh, specifically located in Alto Pass, Illinois. And it's 111 feet tall. They've got a, a great article wow. about it on Wikipedia. If you want to look into the history of that cross and, and, uh, you know, uh, everything all about it, but it's, it's pretty, pretty, uh, remarkable, but, uh, I, and I, I want to talk, uh, a, a, a bit of, a more about the intersections of the eclipses, because there's more to, to talk about, Amen. but Pastor Faircloth, we've also learned it uh, since I talked at Ignited Church seven years ago about what else is going to be going on in the heavens, as this eclipse of 2024, the Great American Eclipse of 2024, crosses over uh, our country. And so let me talk about that a bit, because um, this was discovered by uh, a friend uh, of ours, and you may be familiar with her, actually, Rachel Baxter. But she uh, uh, discovered that some incredible things are going to be happening uh in the in the skies in the heavens in particular uh she discovered 
that looking out from the east from Jerusalem on April 8th, there will be an incredible uh, lining up uh, in the heavens. Now, it's not a typical planetary alignment where a planetary alignment is when you're looking out for Earth, from Earth, all the planets seem to be, uh, or several of the planets appear to be at the same spot in the sky, lining up behind one another. So they all kind of come together in one giant dot in the sky. Mm -hmm. that, that's not what we're talking about. But what Rachel Baxter found is that they're actually going to line up in a straight line in the sky where the all of the other seven planets in our solar system, all the other seven planets, along with the sun and the moon, looking out from the east, from Jerusalem, on April 8th, they will form a, they will line up in a straight line in the sky, which is pretty remarkable. So Rachel mm -hmm. Baxter typed this into chat gpt and she said well you know chat chat gpt tell me how rare this would be that all seven planets and the sun and the moon would all form a straight line in the sky and she was told it was a one in 19 million year event for the seven planets and then you, hmm. you add in the sun and the moon and it's a one in 32 million uh year event wow. so as all this other stuff is happening on earth we have this strange lining up of the planets in the sky extremely extremely rare event for them to form a straight line like that in the sky so it's uh, you know and this is something that can't be faked or manipulated because ultimately god orders the 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 the, the heaven the heavens mm -hmm. and so in you know, this is another indication uh, that God is trying to tell us something with this really strange and odd lining up uh, of the planets. Um, and, uh, so, and so have I, have I missed anything you wanted me to touch on so far, Pastor uh, Benjamin? I want to make sure I don't leave anything out here. No, no, I think our audience is absolutely loving it. It's so much information to digest and just, yeah, do what you're doing, take your time on it. Uh, I think it's... Absolutely amazing. I do want to say this, uh, if I understand correctly, you know, the the Jewish scholars believe that the the uh, the lunar eclipse was more for the ominous signs of Jerusalem, but the solar was for the nation, the pagan nations, Gentile nations. So this is for us exclusively, isn't it? Well, that, that's that's what they believe. They believe that the solar eclipse is the judgment on the nations. Uh, which I think is is uh, very interesting. But let me take this uh, uh, one step deeper in terms of the, the patterns. Um, because if you look at the giant X over America, and I talked about this last time I was there yeah. um, at Ignited Church seven years ago. But if you also look at it in terms of the, the, the intersection of the eclipses, uh, it resembles a, a a tav, not in modern Hebrew, because modern Hebrew has evolved and changed over the centuries, but in Paleo Hebrew, the kind of Hebrew that was used back when the Old Testament was being written, uh, you know, this this uh, X over America also resembles a tav, which is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet. Okay, mm. and now if you also throw in the ring of fire eclipse that happened in October, 2023. Mm -hmm. And you add that to the map. And then you look at all three, the great American eclipse of 2017, the great American eclipse of 2024 and the great, and the ring of fire eclipse that just happened in October, 2023, all three of those eclipses, you look at that and you look and you're like, wow. what? And a lot of people pointed out that, forms what looks perfectly like a paleo hebrew aleph not a mm. modern aleph which has changed over the centuries but a, a an aleph in paleo hebrew now and people look at that and say hey that look kind of looks like an a and ultimately at the ancient hebrew aleph is where RA comes from, where the first letter in alphabets all over the world came from, is from the Paleo Hebrew Aleph, which then the Phoenicians picked up and popularized and spread to Greece and, and ultimately spread all over the world. But but uh so we've got the so we've got the Aleph, the mm -hmm. first letter 
in the Hebrew alphabet, which will be completed on April 8th. And we've got the Tav, which is the last letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which will be completed on April 8th. Now, the mm -hmm. Aleph and the Tav. A lot of people don't understand the significance of that, but the Aleph Tav is actually in your Bible thousands of times, but hardly ever translated in our English versions. But it's very, very significant. And, 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 and in fact, well, let me, let me, it, it's all throughout the, the, the Old Testament scriptures, but I, I believe that uh, it's also referenced in the book of Revelation. You know, it's because we have Jesus, right? Mm -hmm. In the book of Revelation, he says, I am the Alpha and the Omega, mm -hmm. right? The first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. He says it at the beginning of the book of Revelation and at the end, at the very end. So it's, it, he repeats it. It's, so it's got to be very, very important. And so the Alpha and the Omega are the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. But I believe that when Jesus came to speak with John in the book of Revelation, well, when Jesus was talking with John, when they were running around on earth with the disciples and Jesus was having his earthly ministry, they weren't speaking to each other in Greek. They were speaking in Hebrew. They were right. they were Jewish people. They were speaking to one another in Hebrew. Mm -hmm. you know, and John didn't speak Greek. He didn't write Greek. He was a, a Jewish person. He spoke Hebrew. Um, and now when Jesus appears to people in our time, when Jesus comes and, and, and if Jesus appeared today and spoke with you, he wouldn't be speaking in Greek or Hebrew. He'd probably speak to you in English because that's what you understand. Right, mm -hmm. Pastor Fairclaw? Right, right, right. You know, or if he speaks, if Jesus appears to someone in China, he speaks Chinese, right? Because right. he mm -hmm. wants them to understand what, they, what he's saying. I believe when Jesus appeared uh, to John uh, in the book of Revelation, I believe that Jesus spoke to John in Hebrew, that it was a conversation in Hebrew. And so I believe that when Jesus spoke to John there, that he didn't say, I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I believe that Jesus actually said, I am the Aleph and the Tav. And it was a conversation in Hebrew. It was a, a first and last letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Um, and I believe that Jesus was referring back to you know, all these times in the Old Testament in which, for, for example, take the very first verse of the Bible. Mm -hmm. Okay, there's an Aleph Tav in the first verse of the Bible. And see, there's seven Hebrew words in the first verse, very first verse of the Bible. Only six of them are translated into English. Uh, the, uh, the fourth word, the Aleph Tav, is not translated. And there's all kinds of reasons why scholars do that. And I go over that in my book. But it's never translated. So I never even knew it was there. All growing up, I never knew it was there. But it, we read, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But right in the middle, the fourth word is the Aleph Tav. Hmm which Jesus in the book of Revelation says, I am the Aleph Tav. I, and so Jesus was saying in the end of the book of Revelation, he was saying, I was there from the very beginning. I am the Aleph Tav. I was there at creation. I was there in the very first book of the uh, verse, very first verse of the Bible. And actually, if you look at it, I believe all throughout scripture, we see God's 7,000 year plan for humanity. And we see sets of four and the, uh, uh, sets of seven and the, the number four represents Messiah because I believe that, Messiah came in the fourth millennium of all of human history, the fourth day, right at the end of the fourth day of human history. And then we had the fifth day and the sixth day, which we're in now. And then Jesus comes in. The seventh day is the millennium, the thousand year reign of Christ mm -hmm. from Jerusalem for a thousand years. This is what uh, early church fathers wrote about this extensively. They believe this. There'll be 7,000 years, 6,000 years, and then Messiah would reign for the day yeah. of the Lord, the last day. The the, the 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 millennial reign for a thousand years that's the seventh day just as god created the world in six days then there's a seventh day of a peace of rest and so we see it in the seven days of creation as well but we also see it in the very first verse in the bible there's seven words the fourth word in ancient hebrew is the olive tav and that mm -hmm. represents messiah and that's because he would come on the fourth day of human history uh you know i know i'm getting in kind of deep here but Go for it. It, it's so remarkable yeah. that the, the word that represents Messiah is the fourth word out of the seven. And so we see God's 7,000 year plan for humanity prophetically revealed actually in the first verse of the Bible from yeah. the very beginning, which I think is super cool. But yeah. and, and in my book, I go how it's also reflected in the days of creation. It's reflected in the temple menorah. You know, God has told us from the end, from the beginning in so many ways, and, and we're always going deeper on this, but mm -hmm. then the Aleph Tav 
is also thousands more times, literally thousands of times, more times throughout the Old Testament, but we don't see it in our English Bibles because it's not translated for us. Mm -hmm. But Jesus is saying, I'm the Aleph Tav. I was there on every page of the Old Testament. I've been there from the very beginning. But now, Pastor Faircloth, and this is my point, mm -hmm. now, here in 2024, on April 8th, a Tav is being completed on April 8th over America, Right. And Aleph is being completed on April 8th over America. The Aleph Tav, and, 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 which, which represents Yeshua, represents Jesus. Yeah. And Jesus is saying that literally the, 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 a sign in the heavens which represents Jesus is being painted over America, finishing on April 8th. On the first day of the first month of the biblical calendar, as all these things are happening, as all these signs in the heavens are happening, it's like God is, is screaming at us, hey, Jesus is coming back. I'm literally putting this sign in the heavens that represents Jesus, Yeah, and hardly anyone's talking about it. <laughs> I know. No, no, the the, the lethargic church, the, the, the paganized church, no, they're not. No, but because you know what it means, it means it's time to get ready, and and to get ready means you got to put oil in your lamps. That means you had to be that virgin, those ten virgins, the wise ones. You got to be, you know, prepared, repenting. You have to be cleansed, you know, by the blood of the lamb. All of these 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 elements of faith and Christianity that the church is not preaching about, they're they're silent about it, and God is using, I believe, this warning, this sign, this this. Uh, just beyond historical sign to say, hey, Jesus is coming, but you're not ready for his coming. He first comes to his temple suddenly. He first comes in judgment. He first comes with those eyes, flames of fire, that passion to cleanse the temple, to cleanse the house, the sanctuary. Then then he comes, you know, and rescues and all that later. But we're, we're not ready for this, Brother Michael. And, and, it, and it's people like you, myself, the others that are just doing all we can 2024 is a year of sounding the alarm that's the word the lord gave us here and uh this is part of that alarm and if you don't get any louder than this i don't know what else to tell you so yeah keep, yeah keep... <laughs> uh, you're right it, it, it's it's so sad because most churches churches were talking about the end times more in the 1970s and 1980s far True. more than they are today Sure. Most churches don't even want to talk about, uh, you know, of course, we've got a large segment of the church, which has just gone in, way into apostasy, where the post is, Pope is even saying, hey, we're going to bless same-sex unions. And then much of the rest of the church, you know, we got so much of the evangelical church, they want to make everyone feel good, don't want to offend anyone. So we're not going to talk about anything controversial, anything that's going to upset anyone. We don't want to talk about end times. We don't want to talk about abortion. We don't want to talk about any of these things, because then people might not come back the next week and put money in the offering plate. Sure, and yeah. so we're not, and you know, if the church was doing their job, I would be out of a job because people would be <laughs> like, what are you talking about, Michael? I already heard about this at church. I already heard about this a ton of times from my pastor. Why are you even <laughs> talking about this? Everyone knows about this, you know? Yeah. Uh, but unfortunately, it's left to kind of the people that have been are outside of the institutional church to yeah. kind of sound the alarm. Of course, there are churches such as your church, you know, which are sounding the alarm too, but kind of outside the big power structures of religion oh, yeah. uh, to kind of sound the alarm. And uh, because, and then, and then, you know, even most of the church that is talking about uh, end times, the minority that is talking about it, the majority of the minority uh, is like, well, you know, things are coming, but before anything really bad happens, we're going to get pulled out of here, right? We're, right, we're going right. to be gone. Yeah. So we don't really have to worry about it because we're about to get our <laughs> our, our our ticket out. Um, okay. And so they're setting the stage for confusion on an absolutely massive scale, disappointment on an absolutely massive scale, because people are going to be so crushed and fearful yeah. that they have to go through 
the birth pains that they have to go through all the Jesus, the, the things that Jesus said we were going to have to go through. He warned us in advance, not so we would be afraid, but they're going to be fearful because their hope, their great hope is that they will be able to avoid it. And believers all through human history and even believers today in many countries have to go through horrible persecution. Um, but the, the whole point is that God put us here for a reason. Now, I don't know if he saved the best for last or if we were all that he had left. I know I certainly <laughs> feel very weak and limited. Yeah. And so, uh, you know, uh, and, uh, you know, I'm in the process of trying to become who God wants me to be, as we all are. And praise God that he hasn't given up on any of us. Praise God. Amen. But he keeps working on us. And but he put us here for a reason. And... Yeah. And the reason wasn't uh, to make us afraid, but God put us here. He has a plan for us. He has everything under control and he can bring us through this. He's, he's in control. And I believe the greatest hour for the church is ahead of us. I believe that the greatest harvest of souls in all of human history is coming and will be the end times message because God could have picked a day and said, that's it. That's the end. No warning. Y'all are done. Right. But he didn't do that. Right. Instead, he he gave us the book of Revelation. He gave us all the prophecies. He 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 has set in advance a a very long series of judgments of things that will happen. And every time there's a shaking, there will be a, that's another opportunity for the world to repent and get saved and get right with God and turn to Him. So that there's a redemptive purpose in all the things that are going to happen. Every time a major event happens. Boom, that'll be opportunity to bring in the harvest. And so God's not going to take all of his harvesters out just as he's getting ready to bring in the biggest harvest in all of human history. Because everything that happens, another uh, uh, another, uh, another opportunity for people to come into the kingdom. And so we're going to have this long series uh, of, of, of opportunities for people to get saved. Because today, I mean, yeah. especially in the Western world, so many people are so hardened and they don't want to hear the gospel. They don't want to hear anything about God. It's going to take a great shaking to shake people to the extent where they realize, yeah, this is the same God that we see all throughout the Bible. He's the same God today. He's doing the same things. And he's really doing the things he talked about in the book of Revelation. I need to get saved because God is real. Yeah. And so it's going to take a whole lot to shake people up. And we want to be here to say, hey, here's how you get saved. Here, here's what God has done in my life. I'm not perfect, but here's what God did for me. And praise God, he didn't give up on me and he hasn't given up on you and you can get saved right now. And so I praise God Amen. that he's, there's no other time in all of human history than I'd rather be than right here, right now, Pastor Kirkloff. Right. And I That's praise right. God for that. I praise God that he brought me through all the years and he brought me here today. And so, what we're sharing with people is a message of encouragement. What yes. we're sharing with people is that there's hope and God put you here for a reason. He put you here for such a time as this. And so if you wanted to live in biblical times, you're going to get your chance. Yeah. And <laughs> the things right. are about to kick off in a major way, Pastor uh, uh, Faircloth. Yeah. Yeah, they are. We, we've been born for such a time as this. This is the greatest time to be alive. You know, people say to me, you know, you're a doomsday preacher and doom and gloom and all that stuff. Man, the message I have is hope. To, to be warned is hope. To be warned is mercy. It's grace. It's the goodness of God to warn you of sudden sudden death or destruction or anything like that. Uh, it's hard to be the messenger of it because it's a very hard message, especially in this type of comatose, uh, uh, milk toast type of church setting we have today in America. But that's why God raised up Jeremiah's and the Elijah's and these mighty men and women of God uh, throughout the Old and New Testament to shake the church out of complacency, to bring sinners back uh, to the creative uh, uh, fold, if you will, of an almighty God uh, for which they were created for and from, for his own good use and pleasure. And so th this is the greatest message, Brother Michael, that that could ever be given is a message of warning and the message of the cross. It's a, it's a mingled message, if you will, that I think equates to hope. The hope of the world is Jesus Christ, but he's not coming back as that, that shepherd carrying that little lamb on his shoulders. He's coming back as the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. 
and he's coming to judge the nations of the earth and rule it with a rod of iron. And there's going to be great reverence in the spirit of all is coming back to the church. Uh, we we don't respect God because we don't have this we don't have the fear of God. And I think all this, Brother Michael, is going to bring us to the fear of God, will bring us to the all and reverence of God, which will bring in the greatest harvest. So uh, this is uh, the, the best time to be alive. I'm so grateful that God has preserved you and I for this time, as well as all those that are listening and watching. And uh, if I can, as I was looking back at some of the, the messages there on, uh, seven years ago, I was thinking, Lord, you preserved us. We're, we're still alive. You know, I've been through hell and back. You've been through hell and back, uh, tough times, what have you. But we're here, and and God has saved the best for last. So I'm I'm pumped up about it for sure. Yeah, I, I praise God, and we didn't imagine seven years ago we would see COVID, and and then the then the the response uh, to COVID, which was even more. You know, I believe the response to COVID was actually a pestilence. We could, yeah. Because that actually did far more damage uh, than COVID did, and and we've True. seen uh, so many other things, and then the war in Ukraine erupted, and and wars coming to America too, as yes. I talked about all those years ago. Um, but you know, but the, I believe the end times warning message is going to be the number one soul winning tool, and time is of the essence, because the vast majority of the people alive on this planet today are going to die, are yes. going to die by the time we get to, by the time we get to, by the time we get to the end of the tribulation period, the, the, the only a small, a very small fraction of the global yeah. population will still be alive at True. that point. So people That's need right. to understand at once these things start moving very, very rapidly, we are going to see death and destruction on a scale we've never seen before. So the goal is to win as many of them for the kingdom as we can while there's still time to do so. So the, yeah. the goal is to win souls, but that it's also now going to be a race against time because we don't have the time just to sit back and, and, and casually go about our business as we have for so many years. But it is going to be literally a race to snatch as many from, from the jaws of, of hell and from the powers of darkness as we can because yes. so many are going to be dying. I mean, if you look through just the book of Revelation, it talks about, you know, large groups of people dying and, and during different things that happen. And, and we are going to see uh, things are going to get far worse in terms of conditions than people, most people can even imagine right now. But like I said, there is hope and we are supposed to be here and we're supposed to be here. For God's business, not our own business, so people are living for their own plans and their programs and their schooling and their career and their 401ks and their entertainment and all the things they enjoy in this life. Well, they're going to be crushed because all those things are going to be going away. Those things are going to crumble. Yes. But what is real is Jesus and his kingdom and the things that are eternal. Yeah, absolutely. And again, that's the message of the, of the final warning. That's the message of the end time warning. It's a message of hope. No man's promise tomorrow. And we, you know, Michael, you know this, and I've been I've been astounded by reading in the papers. And I say papers, you know, that's gone, the internet basically. Uh, you know, people that are dying at young ages, we know about the jab and all these different things, but you just read about it 25, 19, 46, 52, you know, big names, small names, people are checking out. And we haven't even reached these uh, apocalyptic things. And so now's the time to reach our family. Now's the time to speak Acts 16, 31. You know, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Thou shalt be saved in the whole household. We need to just be radical in our evangelism and just have the that type of tenacity to say, you know what? I'm not letting you go to hell. You're not going to go to hell with, you know, through me. Through me. You're, you're, I'm going to do everything I can. And so I, I'm just astounded by what's happening on the earth today. And the church, even though this is happening, Brother Michael, the church is still asleep. They won't evangelize. They want to do inclusionism. They want to do diversity, DEO, DEI, all the stuff. And, and we're sending people, we're not sending them, but our message, I guess, the message of the pagan church is sending people to hell daily. And so to me, this message, what, what, it, it stokes me up, it empowers me, what you have just talked about today, empowers me not to, to go hide the bunker, 
but empowers me to go do what I just said and witness to those folks. Because again, no man's promise tomorrow. Now's the time. Now's the time. Yeah, now is the time to become whatever God created us to be. So if people are watching today and saying, well, I've messed up or, you know, I'm not uh, amounting to anything or I'm not making a really big impact for the Lord or, you know, uh, you know, hey, I'm kind of disappointed with my life up to this point. It doesn't have to be that way moving forward. The past right. is the past. But right now, you know, if, you, if you're not a Christian, you can invite Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Or if you are a believer right now, you can, but you've been living, you've been doing your own thing. You've been going your own way. You've been choosing your will. Uh, uh, you can say, hey, I'm going to get right with God today. I'm going to surrender to Jesus. I'm going to yes. live for Christ from this point forward. And from this point forward, God can, uh, God, what God can do for any of us, he can take the broken pieces of our lives and turn them into a beautiful thing. From this point forward, God can use you greatly. The greatest chapters of your life can still be ahead of you, no matter how old you are. You know, you know if you're watching today, you feel like, well, I'm really old. What can God do uh, through me? You know, if God can use me, he can use anyone. A, a broken down, I once upon a time I was an attorney working in Washington, D.C. No one knew who I was. No one who cared who I was. And, and but God picked me up out of there. He, and he has used me. If he can use me, he can use anyone. That's so if right. God can use you and you've been placed here at this monumental, incredible time in all, all of human history, we're going to prepare the way for Jesus to come back. We're preparing the way. And, and we get to be here for this. And God puts you here and he can use you. He can use anyone. And so, and we want to hear when we get to heaven, well done, good and faithful servant. And he can, if you're watching today, he can do that for you. And, and, and so don't give up. Keep pressing into God because he has a plan for you. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I love, I love the message of second chance, third chance, fourth chance. <laughs> I, I love it because God is a restorer. He is restored. He's not a respecter of persons. What he did for you, he'll do for me. What he's doing for us, he'll do for anybody. If we'll just use faith and call upon his name and say, Lord, here I am. You know, I'm available. I may not be qualified, but you qualify me. And so uh, I want you to just give a couple final words, you know, your final thoughts, uh, Brother Michael, uh, that I'd like for you to pray. I want you to pray. Obviously, for those that don't know the Lord Jesus Christ, this link's going to go everywhere. People are going to respond to it. Uh, and then the brokenhearted, the guys and the gals that are just, they're struggling, like you just said so eloquently, you know, uh, maybe I don't feel like the Lord's using me, or how can I how can I be of any significance with all of the weight of this stuff coming at us? What can I do from my little town or my big city or what have you? And and just pray over that particular uh, uh, subjects. And then, uh, obviously I want to talk to you just a few minutes about your material and how everybody could just get a hold of you and be praying for you and your ministry. So if you would, please give us those final words. Sure. Well, I, I want people to understand, you know, there's not going to be a pre-tribulation rapture. Okay. If you're right. watching, I'm, I'm sorry, you know, if, the, if um, that disappoints anybody, and I've, I've written a whole book about why that's true, okay? We're going to go through the birth pains. We're going to go through some very hard times. We're going to see death and destruction in particular. We're, we're about to see uh, political chaos in, in this country like never before, civil unrest, crime, looting, problems with, we've had all this migration, illegal immigration. That's just going to add fuel to all of that. Our economic problems are, you know, we've had some in the past few years, but they're going to greatly intensify yes. along with the famine. Jesus said there would be global famine. It's already started. People are already dying from starvation on the other side of the world. Global food supplies are getting tighter and tighter and tighter. We've got a global food crisis. We've already had pestilences with COVID, the response to COVID, uh, the bird flu. We had the monkeypox. We're going to have a much worse pestilences coming. Jesus said pestilences are coming. So that is is uh, coming as well. Great, tremendous natural disasters. You know, watching the Ring of Fire, Mount Fuji in Japan, Mount Rainier, the West Coast. The big one is eventually going to hit California. We're going to have the New Madrid. You know, we're going to have uh, uh, someday a tsunami on the East Coast and all the natural disasters God has warned us about. You know, we're moving into the most chaotic time in all of human history. 
And if you want to have hope, not only to make it through the times that are coming, you can food, pile up all the food and supplies you want. And I'm a big advocate of that. But if, if you don't have Jesus, you don't have hope. Right. But uh, uh, in addition to, to, to having hope for the times that are coming, if you want to have hope for eternity, you need Jesus. If you want eternal life, and I'm not, and I'm not just talking about thousands or millions or billions or trillions of years, but that's just the beginning of eternal life. And that's yeah. what God is offering us. And that is a greater hope and future than anything Hollywood could ever dream up. That's a future that's more glorious than I even have the words to describe. If you want that, if you if you aren't a Christian, you don't know Jesus. If you died tonight, you don't know where you're going to go. Well, I'm about to pray a prayer for you. Or if you're a Christian and you're like, I'm, I, I'm Michael, I've been listening to what you guys have been talking about today. I got to get my life back on track. I need to get right with God. I need Jesus to run my life. Well, I'm about to pray a prayer of dedication for both uh, unbelievers and believers who need to rededicate their life to Christ. And I'm going to pray a prayer, and it's a very simple prayer, just expressing to God that, that, that you want to surrender to him, that you want to repent of your sins, and you want Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. You want to live for him. So if, you're, if, if you want to pray that prayer, pray along with me right now. Lord Jesus, yeah. I need you. Please be my Lord and Savior. I invite you to be my Lord and Savior. Yes. I repent of my sins. I turn from my sins, all my wicked ways. I repent. Yes. I reject my, all of my sin, and I renounce every evil thing I've ever done. Yes. I choose your laws, your statutes, your commandments, your ways. Please teach me your ways. Please teach me your ways. I choose you. I will, from this point forward, I will follow you the rest of my life. Lord Jesus, come into my life. Take the throne of my life. Be my Savior and Lord. I give my life to you. Thank you for dying for me on the cross, Lord Jesus. I believe you are the Son of God. Thank you for rising from the dead. I believe you rose from the dead. I believe you are the Son of God, and I choose you as my yes. Lord and Savior today. From this moment forward, I want to live my life for you. Yes. Teach me how to live for you. Yes. Thank you for coming into my life. Thank you for being my Lord and Savior. Thank you that my name is written in heaven. Thank you that I'm born again. Thank you that I'm a child yes. of the living God. Help me to live the Christian life. Help me to find believers to fellowship with me. Help me to read your word, to pray, and to get closer to you. Help me to become the person you created me to be, because on our own we can do nothing, but with you all things are possible. And I pray all these things today in the name of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach in Hebrew. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe. I believe. Thank you, Brother Michael. I really appreciate your time. Uh, it's, it's been it's been great. Let's not make it seven years again. Amen. We may not have seven years. <laughs> yeah, amen. <laughs> seven weeks, who knows? But uh, we'll, we'll get back together right maybe after this uh, this eclipse comes through. But I want to thank you, man, for taking your time. I know you're a busy guy. Uh, please, please tell us about all of your ministry material and then how to get a hold of you. And guys, I, I ask for you to, to to support Brother Michael's ministry. So tell us, tell us how to do all that. Yeah, yeah I've got uh, several websites, but I've, I've started up something new about a year ago. I've got a newsletter. And so if you want to get the latest end times news, the latest research I've done, write in your email box as soon as I publish it. Well, you can go to michaeltsnyder.substack.com, or if you just go to Google and type in Michael Snyder, Substack is Michael Snyder, S-N-Y-D-E-R, Substack. It'll take you right there, and you can subscribe for free and get most of the articles and the things that I'm doing right in your email box. Or there's also a paid subscription op option where you can get the bonuses that I, I produce for the paid subscribers. So you can do both. But then even if you subscribe for free, you'll get the, the articles in your email inbox. And then if you want to reach out to me and contact me, once you get the article in your inbox, just hit reply to the, that email, and then it'll send an email right to me. So that's the easiest way to reach me if you want to reach me, because you get the email, just hit reply, send me an email back, and I'll get the email right in my email box. And now I get a ton of email. So it may take a couple of days for me to get back to you. So, you know, don't if I don't get back to you within a few minutes, don't be offended because, <laughs> you know, I get a, a lot of them. Um, but that if you subscribe to the, the email newsletter, 
then you'll keep up with everything I'm doing uh, right away. And then the the book we the, the new book I talked about today. Uh, this is kind of a a a, a uh, an early copy, so it kind of has a line right across the middle. But it actually has the 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 eclipses we talked about right on the cover. It's called Chaos. And I talk all about the eclipses, the Olive Tav, and so much more. Talk about the Ark of the Covenant and tons of stuff, uh, which is going to be happening in the end times in the book, new book. It's available on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. It's entitled Chaos. And uh, and that's a great way to support what we're doing. Help us get the, the message out all over the world. Because each month from our home way up here in the middle of the, the mountains, in the middle of nowhere, we are reaching people in more than half of the countries on the entire planet each yeah. month with our materials. And so you can help us do that uh, by uh, getting the book or subscribing to the newsletter. So I uh, very much encourage everyone to uh, to do that. Absolutely. You will not be you will not be disappointed by his material. He definitely has a plethora of information and he researches all the time. Uh, Brother Michael, again, thank you so much, man, for taking your time with, with us here at Ignited Life uh, Prophetic Worldview. It's been a real great blessing. I know we're going to get a lot of great positive feedback, but most of all, I'm believing for salvations and dedications for folks out of this particular broadcast. Brother Michael Snyder, thank you so much, brother. Blessings to you. Thank you, Pastor Faircloth. Thank you for having me on today. Amen. Guys, we love you. Be blessed. Remember, you don't have any troubles. All you need is faith in God.